Hello there. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Faces for Autism streaming with Blob Telethon. I'm Jacob Hackett. Um, you've heard from our parents. You've heard from local uh, Miss, America, Miss New Jersey contestants. You've heard from Miss Americas of years past. Now it's time to focus on a topic that's been on everyone's mind the past two, two years, education and the challenges teaching special ed during a pandemic. Uh, here to tell us more is a, a former teacher uh, that I had at ACIT. As I just said, I left that Next year will be 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a uh, history teacher, uh, Gabe Staino. Thank you for being here. Uh, my first question, give the viewers a little background of how you started since you just said 25, it'll be 25 uh, years. And, uh, since, oh yeah, since high school, 25 years. High school. Um, yeah, I haven't been a, teaching 25, I, I, this is my 11th year at ACIT. Um, but uh, before that, I taught for a year in Pleasantville and then I actually, um, yeah, I taught seventh grade social studies um, at Pleasant Tech Academy in Pleasantville. And then after that, I went to England for, for two years, um, East London. I, I taught a geography, religion and, and history over there at a secondary school for two years. And then I came back and uh, yeah, uh, you know, I did long-term subbing for a year and then got the job here. So I, I guess total, what's that make? I don't know, 13 or 14 years. I've been, I've yeah, been teaching. yeah, math, math, math doesn't, math doesn't count tonight. Math, math doesn't count. Uh, so you've spent 14 years, uh, teaching all together. Um, what was it like teaching in England? Because it's very different from here over across the pond. Yeah, across the pond, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. Um, you know, kids are, kids are kids, so there are a lot of similarities. I think the differences sometimes are uh, uh, overstated a, a bit, but I mean, the setup's different. A, a lot less students go to university over there. Um, basically, because it's it's almost, it's a lot, lot cheaper. Um, it's almost free. It's kind of uh, taxpayer money, but you have to get certain grades basically to get in. It's kind of like entrance exams. And so, there's a lot less universities um, because they're, you know, they're not for profit over there. So when it's, you know, it's not business, there's not going to be nearly as many, but, and like I was coming from a very working class area, um, not, you know, not a lot of money, um, you know, a bit of a tough area in, in East London, uh, a very small percentage of the students where I, taught end up going to university. So um, uh, an overwhelming majority of the students uh, in the area where I teach, they leave school actually after what would be considered like sophomore year in high school here. So like at 16, most of them go into uh, an apprenticeship or you know a trade after that. And then those that are planning to go to university go to something they call college, which is basically like the last two years uh, it would be like your junior and senior year in high school here. So um, they call that college. And then they're the kids that are pretty much on the university track. Now, if you go to like the, the wealthier areas uh, in the UK, you'll have a lot higher percentage of students that are going to be going uh, to university. But, um, you know, it's here, uh, it's, it's really unfortunate how expensive uh, tuition is for university. And, you know, there are too many students that, that kind of go down that path when it might not be necessary and they could be making a lot of money and 
you know, they have talent and they've learned trades, especially at tech schools like ACIT, where they could be, uh, you know, doing a, getting started on a great career, making money right away and, uh, you know, living a secure, um, financially stable life uh, rather than getting saddled with unbelievable debt and then some of them, you know, not continuing and finishing anyway. It, um, so, I mean, there's positives and negatives about each situation. I mean, the big negative is here is just how out of control tuition costs are in college. But it was definitely, definitely interesting. I mean, very good teachers over there, good students. I, you know, kids and teachers are, are basically the same. Um, and it really depends on the area you're in here or there. Um, kind of the setup, it's, it's kind of regional. And um, so, you know, it varies, but, uh, you know, I, I basically with all the, the differences, how things are set up though, uh, when you get down to it, the teachers are there because they love to work with kids and they're interested in them progressing and doing well in life and achieving and, and just being happy. Um, and secure. And that, at the end of the day, that's what everyone wants. At the end of the day, uh, yeah, it's great if you become some great millionaire success story, but the most important thing is you, you, you want kids to be good people and be happy and secure. And that's, I think that's what all human beings uh, have in common, that that's what everyone wants. So uh, it was a really interesting experience. And I kind of lost my train of thought for a second there, but uh, I'm glad I did it. But then uh, also glad we're, uh, to be where I'm at now and have spent the time with these students here at ACIT and you, especially for a couple of years, being one of my favorites, being a superstar and still doing great things. Um, that was a special time having you in class because not only, you know, hopefully you learned some things from me, but I learned a lot from you and so did uh, the other students in the class. And I think everyone became better, better people for it. I got to share a uh, classroom with you for, the, for those years. Yeah, I mean, I consider myself lucky to have gone to ACIT and to obtain the education that I, that I had because I had said earlier in tonight's broadcast that that, you know, when you're looking to, towards the next chapter of life, once a child, especially those with um, a special, special needs, special education, it's not always easy. And I was lucky I had the experiences with you, with the staff at ACIT that really set, set me on the right foot to the next chapter of life and I really hate to sound corny here but I'm going to use a movie reference ACIT quote unquote is in a league of their own you don't get a you don't get the most high schools now do not give a class, like a, you don't get college credits or on your way to your next career by the time you're graduating high school. That's extremely rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's high praise from you. It, yeah, and more and more, um, yeah, one of the, uh, I'm teaching a senior elective right now, just was added as a dual enrollment class where the kids get college credits for, which, you know, if they took that class next year, when they're at college, it would cost them $2,000 or something like that. But I mean, it's $400 and um, saves them a lot of money. And if, if anyone that's eligible for free or reduced lunch, it's completely free. That's a huge, uh, a huge advantage that um, saves a lot of money later on. That, and uh, hopefully we're gonna see those programs expand I don't know that every university is going to want that because maybe it takes money out of their pockets, but um, we're glad that it's happening. And hopefully the students get more and more of those 
those opportunities to take care of some of those college credits while they're still in high school. Those that take advantage of it are really doing themselves a favor. Yeah. They're on the, the university path for sure by taking those classes. So we talked about education. What, do you, what are you teaching now, for example, because you said you're teaching a senior elective in addition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm teaching uh, mostly uh, U.S. History two classes to juniors, um, but also uh, two uh, African American studies classes, which um, to seniors. So they're small classes, and uh, it's really going well. Um, yeah, it's it, it's eye opening, um, and a lot of the students I've had before, so we kind of already had that rapport, and uh, I've been enjoying it. Yeah, it's my first year teaching that course, and. Um, African American history has always been something that that um, I've dedicated a lot of time to to study and appreciate, and um, I'm glad I get to you know share some of my knowledge of it and learn from our students as well. But it, it's it's been a good year so far. Although I was on paternity leave until a week ago, so I was home for uh, two months um, with my son, which which was great and. Uh, not easy, because uh, yeah, he, he's on the move now. And uh, yeah, I don't always have the longest attention span. So if, I, <laughs> if I'm not paying attention every single second, something terrible could happen. But we, we avoided any catastrophe, so yeah. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you, I'm, not to get off topic, but I'm glad you avoided, because catastrophes at home uh, with the baby that's a positive uh, if you if, well, I tell you I get laughing during these uh, if you could give anybody advice any upcoming 7th, 6th, 7th, 8th graders that are thinking about attending ACIT what would it be? Um yeah, go ahead. just go on with an open mind, really, and because um, I know that you know the one the one it's it's difficult leaving your your home school and leaving that comfort zone um, with you know it's not for everybody either. But I think most of the kids that come here really you know become glad or, or eventually very glad that they did. Um, whether at first, you know, their parents forced them to, or they chose to, it, um, it really is a nice experience. I mean, overall, you know, you have your problems, but I think the kids are, are extra accepting of each other here. And I think there's less of that clickiness and it really is. I mean, it's super diverse, uh, which is, you know, closer like representation of, you know, our population as a whole at this school than a lot of other schools. And you're, like you said before, you're learning um, skills for a quarter of each day that, that whether you go into that, I mean, whether it's carpentry or, or performing arts or um, medical or IT or engineering, or you know, there's a lot of different programs, you're going to be uh, able to use those the rest of your lives. and you get to use your hands, you know, and get up out of your seat a good portion of the day. And that, that helps, that helps a lot for a lot of kids, you know, we need that or this, the traditional school setting of just sitting in your seat all day and, and, and not being active can be really difficult um, for some, for some students uh, it, like me, but it, um, you're being taught by you know, professionals in a lot of fields that have um, gone into education later on, but really just to, um, you know, use the cliche, which is kind of our, our motto, pursue what you love, you have the opportunity to do that here. And there's, you know, there's, and it's popping up in a lot of other schools too, like these trade programs, not just the tech schools now, which is, which is a good thing. Um, you know, there's obviously competition for students um, and, you, of course, we want to make make students aware of, of 
of what we offer, but it's, you know, competition's a good thing because it, it makes other, other schools offer similar programs. And in the end, you know, it's, the competition is there naturally and it can improve things. But in the end, you, the goal is to, no matter what school students choose to go to, to give the best educational experience you can to all of our students, you know, in our state, our country, you know, globally as well, that um, the better we do that job, the, the better ultimately our society is going to work. Um, and um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not, not doing a great job finishing sentences today, but uh, yeah, my advice is just keep an open mind, um, go in optimistically and uh, you know, embrace the experience. Uh, uh, I echo every everything you're saying because you know I went there. I I learned from some of the best, and I'm still being given opportunities to help with specific activities within the school throughout the year, and it's because the staff. Those that, I, those that are still there that I know. <laughs> Sounds funny being out of there almost five years, not aging myself any. Um, oh, you're doing that. You're an old man now. Yes, I am old. Um, uh, you know, see what it's all about. Go to ACIT, go to the website. But while we're here, please, please donate. ACID has done tremendous work for Faces for Autism throughout these past five, six, seven years. Mr. Steno had me as a, as a student. He had uh, Ellie Mosca, Kyle's sister. He's had several of us over the years. Please donate the numbers down the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that, that was good. I haven't seen, I, you know, obviously I haven't seen her since graduation. 